definition of cozy, charming, crazy real estate, where we talk about everything real estate. Today, we're going to talk about moving day, and I'm going to share with you 10 tips to help make your move easier, more efficient, and hopefully less stressful. And after we uh, discuss the 10 tips, I have one bonus tip to help make the uh, just period just after you uh, transition into your new home a little bit easier. So stay tuned for that one. So let's get started by assuming we've made an offer, our offer has been accepted, and we have an escrow closing day. On that escrow closing day, we are going to uh, obtain ownership and control of the property and we'll get the keys so then we can move in anytime we want. So tip number one, schedule a transition period, not just a moving day. There are several items that are going to be involved in moving out of wherever we are and moving into wherever we are going. Actual, the actual moving day is just one part, probably the biggest part, but it it, there are many other items that go on. It's not the only thing. So make sure you plan an entire transition. Number two, during the final walkthrough of the property, finalize your list of items that need to be done before you move in. Now, the final walkthrough is normally conducted by the buyer along with their agent, either one, two, three days uh, before escrow closing date to make sure the property is still there and that it's in the condition that it's, it is expected to be on the day that escrow closes. Well, that's a good time while you're actually looking at the property to confirm all the things that you know you want done before you move in. Number, uh, tip number three, make sure that you schedule all the utilities to be in your name and functional on the day you get the keys. Now, a lot of sellers knowing that on escrow closing day, well, I don't own the property anymore. Well, they, they contact the electric company, the water company, whoever, and they say, hey, on this date, I need you to shut me off. Well, don't assume that the electric company knows who you are. Make sure you contact um, all the utility providers and uh, let them know that you want the uh, service on on escrow closing day and you want it in your name. Uh, if it is a utility provider that uh, does not currently service uh, the property, that could be, let's say, the internet service provider, the uh, cable TV provider, uh, maybe the former owner used another service, uh, or it could be the security company, uh, you might want to get a hold of them as soon as you have that escrow closing date so you can get on their schedule because they may have to send technicians out that are not available on a 24-hour notice uh, to come out and install special equipment to hook up to those uh, service providers. So uh, make sure that you make allowances for that and get on their schedule as soon as you can, even though you're going to have to wait to have them come to the property uh, until after you have the keys. Number four, schedule cleaning and yard service. Now, whether you do a cleaning yourself or you hire a uh, cleaning service, you ought to make sure that, that you don't try to clean around all your furniture and boxes and everything after you move in. Do that on a day before uh, you plan your moving day because it's a lot easier to do a deep cleaning in all the nooks and crannies when the house is still vacant. You also want to do the yard service if you can. Again, uh, whether you hire somebody to do it or you do it yourself, uh, make sure you have your yard service done before moving day so that you don't have to worry about it in that first week or two after you move in. You're busy with other stuff, still trying to get organized inside. So uh, have a good cleaning and yard service done before moving day. Number five is a very uh, important one. Uh, it's to create, uh, tip number five, make a map. Create a map of the interior of the house and label each room in the house with a unique identifying number. I'm going to show you an example here in just a second. The, uh, uh, the important thing with the map is that it is going to be used as a guide for people bringing your uh, furniture boxes off the truck and taking it to the room where you want them. Now, uh, you want to make copies of this map, uh, put it uh, on the front door, put it in the hallways, two or three different places throughout the house, 
so that it, uh, everyone, as they come off the truck, they, they can look at the boxes, they can look at the furniture, and they will see on that, let's say, on that box, the same room number marked for the Sharpie uh, that they can see on the map. That way they take it off the truck, they see eight, boom, they go to room eight. Uh, you'll notice I don't call them bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three, because nobody is going to know what that means. Which one is one? Which one is two? So each room gets a unique identifying number. And uh, also, you can put that number on a little piece of paper and tape it to the door uh, or to the door frame uh, of each room to make it easier. Again, you're trying to get people to get things off the truck and to the right room as quickly as possible. So create that map. And one other thing you can do with that map, I didn't do it in the example, but you can do it, is if you have large pieces of furniture, sketch out on the map where that large piece of furniture goes. And uh, that way you don't have to, especially with big heavy items, you don't have to go in doing a lot of furniture uh, rearranging after moving day is done because uh, the movers put it where you wanted uh, at the, on the first day. Number six, have major appliances uh, delivered prior to moving day. Not only is it easier to move them in, but you uh, also want to make sure that those major appliances are, uh, number one, the actual model and type that you ordered, that they're the right color and that they fit in the space uh, where you measured for them to fit, and finally, that they actually work. If any of those uh, conditions are not met, you want to be able to send it back and get a new one. Now, I'm going to use an example, a refrigerator. You want to make sure definitely the refrigerator is up and running and cooled down by move-in day. And I'm going to tell you why here in just a second. So tip number seven starts with our tips that are uh, for apply directly to moving day itself. And number seven is block loading and unloading zones. Now, if you have a moving truck or you're renting a truck and you want to park it in a place where you can get your possessions uh, out of the house and onto the truck, off the truck and to the house uh, as quickly as possible, you want to be able to park it in the most uh, convenient location. If you're uh, expecting a moving van to come and park in front of your house, you want to make sure that you don't have neighbors or people you don't know blocking the curb already parked in the curb and you don't know where they are now the uh and so you can't ask them to move and now the moving van has to park in the middle of the street and block traffic uh preferably you don't want to do that it upsets the neighbors they might call the police and tell the moving van they have to get on down the road that disrupts your move you don't want any of that so the best thing is uh Either the night before, the morning of, after everybody goes to work, block off that area, park your own cars there, whatever you have to do, uh, save that space for the moving van. Same thing at the home that you are moving into. Uh, you want to make sure that when the uh, moving van arrives, they have the best parking spot for unloading. Number eight also applies to the moving trucks. Uh, do not uh, schedule movers to drive through rush hour traffic. Uh, I have seen it where uh, you spent a lot of the day loading the truck. By the time they get on the road to make the half hour drive to the new property, it's 4, 4.30. Now that 30 minute drive is a three hour drive because they're going through rush hour traffic. Uh, don't do that. Plan around uh, peak traffic hours. Number nine, Plan to supervise the move, whether it's you, spouse, family member, friend, uh, anyone else. You want to have someone who is assigned as the traffic cop at your home to, do, to make decisions as the truck is unloaded and things are moved in. Now, we, we have the map, and uh, we've marked all of our boxes with the rooms where they're going to go. Uh, we've marked the furniture, uh, maybe with painter's tape or whatever. Uh, and, and written the room number, uh, room numbers on them, and all that's coming in. But when things change, uh, rooms fill up. Uh, you want a person who's assigned to do nothing else but direct traffic, and so uh, you don't want your friends coming out, coming in with a box that somehow didn't get 
uh, uh, marked and it's full of books and they're standing there in the hallway waiting for someone to tell them where to put it. You don't want to treat people like that or even the professional movers like that. Uh, so have someone who's there to answer questions, make decisions on the fly, plan to supervise, have someone supervise, doing nothing but supervising the move. And number 10, and back to the refrigerator, number 10 is take care of your people. And uh, that means you should have that uh, refrigerator cooled down and stocked with cool drinks, especially if it's a, it's a really hot day. Uh, maybe have some snacks. Uh, if you don't have a lot of seating out in the back, get some folding chairs and put them out. Expect that you should be giving, uh, whether they're for the professional movers or your friends who have come over to help, uh, you want to give them a place where they can go take breaks. Uh, have something uh, cool to drink, maybe have a little snack, uh, just take a break for a few minutes and having a nice area where they can do that is good. Make sure you have at least one bathroom that is available for everybody to use uh, and functional and stocked and uh, make sure you just take care of those people. Also, it is traditional at the end of the move, whether they are uh, professional movers or friends and family uh, to show some appreciation in one way or another. Uh, very traditional thing is to order pizza and have beer at the end of the day uh, after the move is basically done. So think about what is appropriate for your situation, but take care of your people, show appreciation to those who have helped you. Now the bonus tip. Bonus tip has to do with mail. Now, when you are done with your transition, you're no longer living in the old place, you're in the new place, you probably went to the post office and submitted a change of address notice and uh, slash forwarding request so that uh, all your mail that goes to the old place is going to automatically be forwarded to your new place. Well, that's, that's wishful thinking and it usually works pretty good, but as a landlord who has had people move out, uh, who I know submitted a change of address, a lot of mail still comes for a month or two uh, addressed to them at their old address. And uh, I'll usually have their contact information. I'll let them know that I, I have mail for them and they should come pick it up. Now, a lot of it is obviously uh, junk mail that can just go in the recycling. Some of it is junk mail that has their name on it, so I throw it in the shredder. Other stuff, maybe it's from a government agency or something that looks important, maybe from their employer. I want to let them know that they need to come to pick up that mail. So uh, do make sure that uh, as part of your move, if you're renting, let your landlord know how to get a hold of you so they can notify you when you have mail. If you have sold your house, make sure that uh, either the buyer or uh, the uh, buyer's agent, someone uh, who can get a hold of you, uh, can notify you if any mail comes there that's important. And what if you sold a home in the Bay Area and you moved to New York City? Well, you obviously can't just drive over after work and pick up that mail. If you used Cordon Real Estate to, uh, to do your sale as listing agents, one of the things that we do, if you're moving out of town and you find out that you have mail or a package at your old address, we'll arrange to pick it up, box it up, and ship it to you in New York or wherever you might be. So make sure that wherever you, uh, wherever you move out of, that they can get in touch with you in case uh, something like that comes up. So those are the 10 tips and uh, bonus tip. And I hope you found them useful. If you did, please hit like. If you have any suggestions uh, for other items that might help uh, other movers, uh, please uh, list them in the comments below. And uh, also, if you have any questions about any of these, we, we love comments. And uh, also, we are going to be back next week with another edition of Cozy, Charming, Crazy Real Estate. If there's a topic you would like us to cover, please make note of that. And please subscribe. We would love to start getting more subscribers so that we can share this valuable information about everything real estate. So until next week, thanks for uh, joining me and I will see you then. Take care.